Shalom and welcome to two minutes of Torah. This year is entitled, Parsha has told us, Objectivity Part 2. We learned previously that David, his aggressive nature, his Admoni, can only be balanced out with the help of Sanhedrin. Then we know that he could work it through properly. But otherwise, that aggressive nature could cause him to make some horrible mistakes. He may make decisions to go to Mohammed and other things. Uh, based on the aggression without working it through properly. There's another example of this week's parsha. The Pasuk says famously that Yitzchak liked Esau ki tzayid b'fiv. Rashi says it means that he tripped in or he asked questions. He made it sound like he was a real lamdan. Tremendous tamachacham and loved our mitzvahs. Because the simple shot is he loved him ki tzayid b'fiv because he fed him. And the uncle says just that, that that was his love for him. And the Medrash, again, just like by Shmuel, talks about the David's lack of objectivity that on his own, he needed guidance. So, too, by Yitzchak says that he was blinded later on, physically blind, but it was neither connected neither because he was blind to Esav. He took a bribe from Esav. What bribe did he take from Esav? Because Esav fed him. And because Esav fed him, it go went ahead and swayed him a bit. And of course, Yitzchak was doing keep it up aim, and Yitzchak should have taken this course to keep it up aim. But apparently, Yitzchak should have worked harder to make sure that in no way affects his objectivity. The message once again is clear, even by great great people like David and by and Yitzchak, there are things that just could go ahead and cause the objectivity to be swayed. And even these great people, that's what happened to them. And uh, all the more so, this is the Gedolim, like Yitzchak and David, how much more so us. We have to go ahead and pursue objectivity with such energy and such passion. We have to understand that any situation that we're in, that we may not be objective, we need to search out a Havruta, a Rav, someone to talk over the Sigya with, whatever it may be. And uh, just give example after example, whether it's... Uh, Person goes to a mechanic. Let's say the guy's honest. He's not a crook, and he tell him just go check out my car. And he can give a list of things, and he may honestly believe that each one of these is a problem. It could be it's true, but once there's money involved, the objectivity may be compromised a bit. Person is going to a therapy, and person and the therapy is just continuing for months and months and years. Well, there's money every time the person goes to sit in the, the session. Uh, is there any outside? Source is checking out, wait, do we still need this help? So the objectivity can be compromised and the person needs to look to see if there's a way to check this out and look into it to make sure that the person, not intentionally necessarily, but unintentionally, is, is, is there's money to be made and they'll just go ahead and keep up the process. A tutor, a simple math tutor, a Gemara tutor. So they'll just keep tutoring. Is there a specific goal? We need this, this this specific skill. We need ten sessions, whatever it may be, and then we could revisit the topic with the tutor. A person has to realize whether it's with someone else, whether it's oneself, the chance of objectivity is slim. Is slim. If there's money to be made, if there's covered involved, whatever it may be that could compromise objectivity, we cannot assume we're any better than Yitzhak and David. And therefore, if a person has this idea and they realize how serious it is. Maybe they can have a system of checks and balances to always keep an eye on the objectivity to make sure there's no bias leaning over here. And then, and only then, I think, is there a chance of true objectivity in MS. Shalom.